Shalom. I want to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who are my teachers. Much respect to the brothers of Laban worldwide in truth and sincerity. And a hearty shalom to the believers out there who's believing on the words of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. Okay? And this lesson is going to be on uh, Scripture and Revelation. Revelation 20 and verse 4. Now here at Great Millstone, we are accustomed to bringing out all the gospel, all the counsel of Yahweh Bashar Shah. All right, the bitter and the sweet. Because we are declared to do these things. We are declared to um, to give you this warning. All right, matter of fact, let's go get that right quick. Let's go to the book of Acts. Because <clears throat> we're going to declare it all. We're not holding anything back. Okay? We're going to uh, give you the whole counsel of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. So this is the book of Acts, chapter 20. And where do I want to start? Hmm. Start at verse 26. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of the Most High. So yeah, we are accustomed here at Great Millstone to declare all the counsel of Yahweh by Shah Shah. Right? So, let's play a little bit of this video. And guess what? It's on the guillotine. All right. We read in uh, Revelation 20. Lord willing, we're going to get that. That uh, these things are going to come to pass. All right. Punishments humans have ever devised. Torture has been used throughout history to punish criminals, make enemies talk, or just for fun by insane despots. But what if you were sentenced to death using a form of punishment that was quick, watched by thousands, and even may have made you a household name? We're talking about the guillotine. Join us as we explore the gruesome and fascinating machine that was the favorite form of punishment in France for nearly 200 years. And whether you agree with this form of punishment or not, just try not to lose your head and keep calm. The guillotine is probably best known. Matter of fact, let's get a couple more scriptures before we, uh, before we check out the video. Let's go to Ezekiel. Chapter 2. And verse 10, and this part of what the gospel, all right? Declaring all the words of Yahweh by Shah And it reads, And he spread it before me, matter of fact. Let's start at verse 8. But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house, but open thy mouth. And eat that that I give thee. Yeah, your your ears are are what uh, a similar to for your mouth, and, and and when you eat these words, you understand them, and then they rest in your belly, which is your mind. Okay. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, and he spread it before me. And it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Yeah, man. Lamentations, mourning, and woe. All right. The bitter sweet of the scriptures. Okay. Let's go to chapter 3. Chapter 3 and verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat thou that thy finest. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. So you got to eat this whole roll, man. Right? You got to declare all the things of the gospel. All right? Including what? The guillotine. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and to fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat 
and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee to the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. You see, that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, when we hear this gospel, yeah, it's sweet to our ears. Because we understand that it's a recompense for Esau Edom. All right, we understand that this kingdom is not going to last forever. But also, it's great tribulation that you have to go through to get to the kingdom. Matter of fact, let's get that. All right? Great, great tribulation, you know? And Jake wanted the easy, man. But no, nah, it's something you have to go through to get to the kingdom. He said, even so, is Israel's portion, right? This is Acts chapter 14 of verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the Most High. You see? Let's go back to the video. was the favored form of punishment in France for nearly 200 years. And whether you agree with this form of punishment or not, just try not to lose your head and keep calm. The guillotine is probably best known for its work during the French Revolution. It struck fear into the hearts of the innocent and guilty citizens across France. And it was a time of unrest and those sentenced to death rarely had trials. But beheading and even beheading machines were not new to the world at the time of the French Revolution. Beheading as a punishment happened throughout history and across the world. It can be traced back to ancient Greek and Roman times. However, beheading wasn't... Why could it be traced back to ancient Greek and Roman times? Because these same devils are the same ones who are in power now, man. All right, the revised Roman Empire. All right, it's something that they've always done. And in and, and their wickedness, all right, they're going to go back to what they've always done. All right, because they're going to be like, what, mad men? Matter of fact, let's go to Revelation. All right? Revelation 12. And... Verse 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens, Yahuwah the heavens, the Israelites, the elect of the children of Israel on this side, and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time, right? It's devil going to come down having great wrath because he know he have but a short time. And part of that wrath is what? The guillotine, the, the beheading of the saints, matter of fact. Let's just go ahead and get that. Let's go to Revelation. Certain spirits, Yahweh Bashar Shah has chosen to glorify him in this way. All right? He's going to put a spirit on those brothers or sisters to endure that. Right? This is Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones. And they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shah. Yeah, what's the witness of Yahweh Shah? Well, let's go back. Let's, uh, uh, let's go back a chapter, right? What is the witness of Yahweh Shah? Let's get it. This is Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy. You see that? Let's go back. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4, right? It reads, and I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. Yeah, the spirit of prophecy, right? You you have uh, certain spirits who've been uh, out there prophesying, right? And they're going to be what? Beheaded, right? For the witness of Yahweh Shai. For the and for the word of the Most High, and which had not worshipped the beast, right? 
neither his image, neither had received his mark in their foreheads or in their hands. And you say it ain't specified, it said hands. It ain't say left or right, right? <clears throat> so these saints that were beheaded, right, was uh, to glorify Yahweh Shah, right? And they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. Yeah, it tells you that those who die in Hamashiach is going to be raised up first, right? Matter of fact, let's go get that right quick. I believe it's uh, is it First Corinthians 15. Let's see. You know, but this is what part of declaring all the gospel of the Lord. All right, it has to be said. It has to be put out there, okay? Let's see. Let's see if I can get it. Salakia. Mm. Not prevent. <sighs> Salakia. Live and remain. Just thinking of how it's phrased. Let me pause it right quick and I come back with the scripture. Okay, Salakia, brothers, is in uh First Thessalonians. Four and what I want to start. Yep. Let's start at uh let's start at verse thirteen. This first Thessalonians four and thirteen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, for I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, yo, they are those who are dead, right? That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yahweh died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh will the Most High bring with him. Yeah, you end up dying for the gospel's sake. Yahweh Shah is going to what? Take care of you, right? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. See? For the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High, and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. You see that? So, if, you know, it, it happens that way, guess what? You have by Shah Shah said, you're going to be caught up in those chariots first, right? Verse 17, this is the point. Well, we're going to read all the way down. But this is the point. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, yeah, if 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 you have to go through that certain tribulation, what? Be thou faithful unto death, right? Matter of fact, let's go get that, okay? Let's go to the book of Sarat, or Ecclesiasticus. In the Apocrypha. Chapter 4 and verse 28. And this is, this, you know, exhortation, you know, declaring all the gospel of Yahweh by Shah as we are told to do. Right? This is Sarat or Ecclesiastes 4 and 28. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee, you see? says, strive for the truth unto death, and he's going to fight for you, man. All right, it may be that you may be on those chopping blocks, and you have by Shah Shah send an angel to liberate you from that from that destruction. Why? Because you're being faithful unto death. So I just tell you that uh, 
in the day of a man's death, he can find favor from the Lord, right? Let's go to Revelation. Chapter 3. And verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And what's that? Our temptation. Well, when that RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast, is being made mandate. And we read earlier that what? They had the testimony. Matter of fact, let's go back. Let's go back to Revelation 20. They had the witness of Yahweh Shai, right? But it's going to be certain spirits. That, that that he's going to keep from that, right? Again, Revelation 20 and 4, and I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, and for the word of the Most High, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Hamashiach for a thousand years. That's right, man. Okay? Let's go back to this video. We'll play a little bit more, and we get a couple of scriptures, and we'll close it out. But it said what? That uh, something that the ancient Greeks and Rome, Romans had uh, devised, right? One of their tactics of um, not torture but uh, capital punishment as it were right not new to the world at the time of the French Revolution beheading as a punishment happened throughout history and across the world it can be traced back to ancient Greek and Roman times however beheading wasn't for everyone it started out as an honorable death that was reserved for nobles and persons of importance. If you were someone of lower status, you were most likely going to be getting the axe as your beheading device. But those with real prestige were decapitated by a sword. You had to be really important to get the sword. Either way, the result was the same. Beheading was not just a Eurocentric punishment either. Seppuku, which is a ritual decapitation by samurai sword, was practiced in Japan from the 15th to the 19th century. Regardless if you were a samurai, Roman soldier, or English crusader, Seder, decapitation was always an option as a punishment. In England, beheading gained popularity during medieval times. It was used to execute rival rulers, soldiers, and traitors. But traitors were not high status, so they were not worthy of just your normal beheading. Instead, they... See? So it's, it's really uh, a punishment that's going to be reserved for those who don't take that RFID microchip, all right? You don't worship the beast which is what uh, NATO, EU, you could say uh, EU, but America and all its uh, Edomite nations is the beast, and the beast system are the policies, the laws, the philosophy, right? And, and the mark of the beast is the RFID microchip. You got to understand these things, all right? So you're coming out of the ways of America. You're no longer... Subscribe to their uh, their way of life. All right, you you what the scriptures say? You those who depart from uh, evil make of himself a prey. But we gotta depend on Yahweh to protect us in that day, right? Why? Because we've been seeking him, while he may be found, right? Matter of fact, let's go to Second Ezra. <clears throat> Second Ezra's chapter uh, chapter sixteen. Okay. And I want to start at verse seventy. Okay. Second Ezra. Sixteen. 
70. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Yeah. Who's going to fear the Lord? The Israelites, the ones who's trying to serve you how by shall shall, right? They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord again. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. You see that? Hear ye, O my beloved, shall I can hear, O ye my beloved, say of the Lord, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. You read that in uh in Daniel, right? You're gonna the the days of trouble are at hand, but how about Shah says he's gonna deliver us from from that trouble, right? Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the most high is your God, and the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts. Say of the Lord, Yahweh Bahashavashah. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Right? Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man can travel through. It is left undressed, and it is cast into the fire. To be consumed therewith. Right? But the point is, how about Shah said what? Verse 75. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the most high is your God. So yeah, he said, Don't be afraid. And you know you have Bashar Shah for those souls, right? Who who are going to be beheaded. He's going to put a spirit on them. Alright, to go through that tribulation, right? To glorify him. Just like those seven brethren, right? They uh, had a spirit that, uh, the same spirit of Yahweh Shai. Well, Yahweh Shai said that uh, you have no power over me except it be given of you, matter of fact. Um, I think it's John chapter 19. Let's see. Let's make this red letter. So remember, you know, if you find yourself in that situation, get a glory to your how by shall shall, right? Because he set up the scenario for you to glorify him in death or to glorify him with a testimony of how he uh, lets you escape, right? Mm. Yep, that's it right there. Where I want to start? Um. Uh, Let's start at verse 8. This is John, St. John 19 and 8. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was more afraid, matter of fact. Mm. Let's start at verse 6. It's St. John 19 and 6. When the chief priests therefore and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take ye him and crucify him. For I find no fault in him. And the Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the son of the Most High. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Yahushua, Whence art thou? But Yahushua gave him no answer. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't scared of that Edomite, man. He was like, man, do what you got to do, right? Then he saith, then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? You see that? Oh, this proud devil, man, right? Just like they are now, they going to feel like they have the power to do whatever they, they want to you, right? Yahweh Shai, and this is the point, verse 11, Yahweh Shai answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, 
except it were given thee from above. You see that? Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Once again, Yahweh made the point that, hey, you have no power over me than that what was given to you from above. So if if you find yourself in that situation, know that your how by shall shy is either going to save you out of that, right? Or you're going to be put to death to glorify him ultimately, right? Let's go to the book of Isaiah. And we got to declare all these things, right? You know, we pray, Lord willing, uh, we glorify the Lord, Yahweh shall shine in a different way, but who knows, right? This is Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushah, shall lift up a standard against him. You see that? So when these devils come in, wild and spoiling, you know, uh, out of control, it says that what? The Lord is going to lift up a standard against them. The spirit of the Lord is going to lift up a standard against them, man. All right? That's going to be it for the lesson. Lord will has been edifying. I want to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Bahashem, Makakadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much respect to the brothers Laban worldwide in truth and sincerity, and a heart of Shalom to the believers out there who's believing on the words of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Lord willing, coming to you with a lesson. Till the next time I say, Shalom.